Yeah. Can you get it roughly right? Yeah. I tried to take off some of my other makeup without ruining everything and making the long process. You did a good job. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. The package. I hope you like what Special I delivery yeah, from no, hell. Oh, it's so big. Oh my god. He's got a really big one this time. They're usually not this big, Stephen. Should we see what's in it? Should we wait? Is it, is it fragile? Do we have to be careful when we slice in? That we if, don't... if you slice this way, it'll be fine because they're on boards. The, the images are here, so yeah, if you cut around, it's fine. Okay. So there's a little bit of boards. So. We would not wish to uh, do any damage to the pictures. No more art. I'm not supposed to cut this way because I did. Uh oh. This is what I ought not to do. Ah! Success! So many degrees. Okay, I'm going to hold these up. You see whether you can get them out of this. Should we get them out of the cardboard first? phases of uh, exploration and all of them were valid but now it's actually just grown into its own flesh palace it's a flesh fountain like, like this is 
this here, I mean, look how beautiful that is. You don't even realize, and you realize it's the vagina here. Mm. And it goes right round, and it's like a Native American uh, warrior's hat. I mean, this is a great big penis hanging. And it's valid as a warrior's hat, but it's also mm. erotic without being corny. I mean, it's, it's really hard now to especially yeah. use genitals yeah. Very and, nice. and have them blend in so beautifully that you forget they're even part of the picture anymore. I do. I, I'm now forgetting its genitals. Oh, I'm just seeing, good. seeing images of, of, uh, sort of the, the inner flesh of beings, yeah. which I think is far more interesting. So I think it's a huge leap forward, a really huge leap forward. I really do. I mean, this is this is serious fucking art. And what you were saying before about it, you know, a child could do, that's bullshit. I mean, people say that uh, about a lot of things, but take some paint and, and splatter it and, and try to make a Jackson Pollock. Yeah, no, nobody's been able to do it. No, nobody, no, nobody can do a Jackson lot of people Pollock. Try it. And when you watch the films of him working, it's... It's obvious that he's entranced. He's in another yeah. world, and he's seeing the inner nature of things. And you look at the work, and you know he's serious. Yeah, and when you think about it, that art is about looking at the inner nature of things. It's about revealing what's inside, whether it be metaphors or literally, or in all, all sorts of different ways. It's about the inner life of the visual world. And that's what you're starting to get here. You've got the inner life. Obviously, it's it's erotic in a sense, but it's very ambiguous in terms of why there's sexual content now. It's not about turning you on, and it's not just amusing. It looks very serious and very uh, as if it has to be there. It doesn't look like it's forced. It looks gen you know, just it, it has to be this way. That's quite an achievement with something that could look very uh, ungainly and contrived. Yeah. Yeah, especially like what you were saying with the genitals, it's hard yeah. to do, create something where it's not just the genitals that people and see. And also, photos, artists, about. since photos existed, artists have been working with photos and using photographs as source material, or yeah, working working photographs, and collaging them. Warhol took photographs and then silk screen them. I mean, you could say a child could do that, but it's the choices. You know, it's the choices and the colours and which ones work and which don't in terms of how the print comes out and a million things that separate the creation of art from, from the viewing of art. And there's no easy path to that. Um, and usually when you really look, like today with Sheila, do you see those really early drawings that he did when he was 14, 12, they're just pencil drawings of people, but very realistic. Mm -hmm. and, you know, just perfect technique. So Sheila, you know, you see some of the later ones with just a few lines and it's all angular and, and uh, funny colours and people might think, well, he does that because he can't draw properly. I mean, you hear people say that a lot. But in fact, he just began to look at the inner life of the flesh, and that's what this is doing too. That's what I want to call the introduction to your book. Yeah, I think I told you. I want to call it Flesh Fountain. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Yeah, that looks like a flesh fountain. So, um, it's funny too, because we had a breakthrough with our last show in way that we just had. We really found that our work broke through, as you saw it. You know, we, we found we'd moved suddenly through this invisible gate, and the work all jumped. Yeah, and no, all really far right. ahead, and suddenly it all made sense, and was beautiful, and was uh, well executed. All these things suddenly happened all at once, and it was it was just doggedly keeping at it and knowing what it was we were trying to get through to, and then suddenly, boom, there's a big breakthrough. I think you've had a breakthrough like that with these. I mean, I could see these in a museum. I could see these in a, in a gallery like we were at today. Um, what, where are you going next? I mean, when, when you've worked through sort of the circular series, will you always use genitals? Do you know what's going to happen? Or are you just going to wait and see? I, I better not guess. I, if you had told me like 10 years ago I would be predominantly doing portraits, 
I was like, no, that was the last thing in the world I'd want to do. That's true, you were doing American flags, weren't you? Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I might stop using genitals, but, you know, even if I painted just nature photographs, there would still be things that resembled human forms and genitals. You know. So. It's hard to say. Yeah, we've, we've, we, we, portraits are, 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 are very, uh, long-standing tradition with art. I think it's it's one of the ways that we remember how culture changes, you know, when you go to museums and go through all those old paintings and see all that. But, but so much... For people, it's, it, it's, really, it's really a record of, of how culture changes and sees itself at any given period, you know. It's also good um, to look at the culture from the portraits because you can see where all the control is because the history of portraiture has been about, it's been a fraud and it's been a lie and it's been, you know, to sell property and to sell monarchy and to sell dogma, you know, and to and please the model and... and patrons and, who had power and Yeah, stuff. so it's kind of a, a really interesting sociological... That's true. So you're going to invade the world of the portrait. Shall we see the next yeah. one? Can I move this one and let's see the next one? Let's see if Big Boy wants to munch on it. He wants to eat the, eat the blue. There's something about it, Stephen, that uh, is just delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the uh, bodily fluids. Okay, here we come. Your turn, I talked a lot then, you have a go. I was becoming so relaxed as a spectator. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, well, I think we know who that is, too. That's both of us. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. I believe that's the two of us. That's your mouth and your chin. And that's my eyes. And my nose. Yeah. Uh, then that looks like my eyebrow. Yeah. It's a bit ugly, and I have to have trouble controlling my eyebrows. I can't remember. Uh, that looks like it could be my eyes. Is that, that my, is that my teeth? That's your teeth, because yours are bigger than mine. That's a little know. bit of a knock on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's the giveaway. <laughs> is this my penis then? Mm -hmm. So these really are my penis. Oh yeah, look. It's a metal. Oh. That vein there. Look at that. Remarkable. The lips look gorgeous. Oh, there's highlighting on here. You know the other thing? Sorry, sorry. No, go on. What were you going to say? I can remember, so you go first. They always... I, I've always uh, loved your, your use of uh, beadwork. It, it reminds me of, uh, of uh, African um, talismans, mm. you know, or, or African ritual objects. It definitely is a, a whole ritual object. All the Haitian flags that we collected on our honeymoon. Now there's penis blood and <clears throat> semen on, on is the last thing that I put on paintings. It's, it is a sigil. So, it's so when you're, you're doing the <coughs> sigil, is, is your intent for everyone a different? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sometimes it's, it's um, the intent is, is purely for my own benefit, not model. I model the subject. This one doesn't have the sand, does it? No. So why did you leave the eyes black in this one if you didn't use the sand? Did you find it impossible to capture the eyes or did you just think that it would, What was the reasoning behind that? Um, the eyes lie to me. Um, I started doing portrait painting because uh, when I was looking at fashion magazines, I saw how they used the eyeshadow. It looked very vaginal, very scrotum. Color. And just thinking about the art school, they're like, if you get the likeness and you get the eyes right, then you got it. And it's like, I don't want to worry about the physical likeness. The photographs 
has that. So if I could show life without the eyes, because you know, the eyes are supposed to be the part of the show life. Well, that's an interesting approach. You know, and if you block the eyes out, people think mask. So if you could paint this mask so it looked like, like it's a person, and you could show a different part of the model. Now that's really that's very interesting. interesting, yeah. Rather than showing life through the physical aspect and the likeness, I wanted to show the other aspects. And now you mention it, this skin in here, these crinkly bits here, really look just like crinkly bits here and crinkly bits here. Yeah. There, there's, um, the eyes are very vaginal. And of course, the mouth is very vaginal. So all these key entry points, the ports of entry, as Burroughs would call them, yeah, uh, all have a, a different kind of skin, a different kind of flesh. I don't know why that would be. Yeah, is it just the need for mobility, or is there something else? I mean, here, right, you can't tell the difference between this flesh here and this flesh here. Yeah, one time I, I did a, a portrait and I used some close-ups of scrotum, but I also found this photograph in a magazine, close-ups of chicken wings, you know, baked chicken wings, and it was the same color and the exact same texture. <laughs> so I used both. I used the chicken wings to extend the, the texture of the scrotum. So it's incredible when you go close-up, you know, how like unexpected things are, like the way uh, we do the landscapes of, of the body if, uh, with, uh, with our voluptuous model. If um, she's lying in a certain way and uh, we take a close-up photograph, it looks like uh, hills in the Sahara and sand dunes. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even have to alter the color very much. So it really tricks the eye. You expect to be seeing something because in that you know in that context in that you know in that uh, you know three by four canvas, one's used to seeing uh, landscapes, not used to seeing uh, the creamy skin of uh, a beautiful uh, two hundred pound model. Yeah. And, uh, so the rolling bad. hills will be her breasts and her thighs and. Uh, you know, the, the depth is created by, by the folds in her skin. There are a lot of patterns in nature and leaves and trees that repeat in the human body. Mm -hmm. You know, patterns repeat throughout nature. And that, that image that we used for the invite, for, for the, uh, the participant exhibition, just looked like a, an amazingly surreal medieval landscape. The coloring and, and, and the tones and everything were just this amazing, beautiful landscape. And very few people, I think, even realized that it was also looking inside the face, which is a bit like what you were talking about with getting rid of the eyes and, yeah. and finding another way in, into yeah, to showing the person. We've had people confused by being inside. Inside the skin, underneath this skin, mm. and inside my face. Is that still a yeah. picture of my face? Of course it is. Yeah. But it's from underneath the skin. <laughs> and things like, just simple changes of, of position from where you're looking can have radical, um, very potent effects on people and disarm them and uh, confuse them in quite a strange way. If you want to do that, do it somewhere else. Go on. Stop, you'll do it for 15 minutes non-stop now. I know, it's, it must taste so good. So the face is the point of vulnerability, and so are the genitals. You know, a model was telling me that, you know, these are two, like, you know, private emotional things. If in the face of something, the first thing you, an infant, like, reacts to is the human face. Well, it's always it's also the last that thing whole you thing that still baffles me. If somebody's wearing a tiny piece of material like this, like a little tiny G-string that just covers the <laughs> labia, and a tiny bit of material covering just the nipples, then it's decent and they're dressed. But if they show the nipples, then it's... Yeah, it's just showing the 
puritanical and... Except if it's a fashion nice. shoe, it's okay again. And if you're on a beach, it's okay again. But people who would show their breasts sunbathing on a beach on holiday would never feel it was appropriate to show them on the subway. But the same random people are going to see them. Why is yeah. that so different? What happens that, that makes problem? it not okay to have random people look in one geographical spot and totally okay in another? It's, well, so it's then, completely ludicrous. Well, then maybe people will be thinking about having sex with each other more often and not buying things. Well, I don't think about having sex, sex with people when I'm walking down the beach if they're sunbathing half naked. Right. Yeah. I just think, good for them that they're relaxed. And uh, I hope they don't get cancer of the skin. You know, that's all <laughs> I think. It, it is, it's it's um, a mysterious sense of not exactly a taboo, but it's to do with, I think it's a leftover of uh, an exchange that used to go on between the male and the female, that to control the males who were basically brutes, who, who just wanted to hunt, replicate, yeah. spread their seed. That's interesting that you say that, isn't it? And, and by the, the withholding of sexual favours, that was the one thing women could do. To, to have a bargaining chip yeah. with the male. And I think this whole covering up of the genitals and the nipples is a leftover of, of, of that system of exchange, that barter between male and female. That's interesting. You, you see that in advertising, too, that kind of using the female body for, to sell non-sexual oh. things. The the so what else? That's Briar Pioris. That's that's the first painting of of the Pandragine. The first official finished Pandragine. Did I do a good job? Let me go back here and see it. Back here. Oh, the red there. looks the red looks incredible from over here. It's really uh, glistening. Oh, it's, red. it's remarkable. It looks alive with light. The red should hold out. The red colors with oil. The red colors really hold out. They fade. And they give you a real um, powerful. Go and have a look. Man. It's amazing. If you don't use like good reds, they disappear three times. So I used like thirty dollar um, Dutch red. So it should be red in a hundred years. Still. Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. It, it looks good. great from here. The you really do a women. beautiful uh, job of, of blending the, the flesh uh, tones. So, you've, uh, so you're interested in the emotional nature of uh, sexuality? Yeah, the emotional and the, and the essence of the person and the emanation, you know, rather than just the, the sexual and the procreation and the power aspects with sex. That's always been much more interesting to me, as as well. Um, yes, especially. You can see the, because you say the face is um, is emotional vulnerability, and uh, we don't do it very well with that in American society. You know, the intimacy no, and vulnerability. No, it's, it's one of the things that's the least explored, and I mean, genitals are. They're uh, certainly vulnerable, but but at their essence, they're reproductive organs. The mind and the emotions are are what's sexual. The brain is the only sexual organ, really. And the genitals yeah, are also sure. for discharging waste, which is one of the other ambiguous aspects of yeah, that's another thing. Of the, the whole thing. About the, the people sometimes have contradictory feelings about the 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 vagina is about replication and pleasure, but it's also about giving birth and it's about discharging waste products and it's about menstruation. It's a highly complex, multifaceted organ. Also and yet it's often reduced down to just the simplest possible uh, description and the simplest possible explanation of its function, which is just and to fuck, you know. Yeah, and, and uh, I think to a certain extent, people culturally think genitals are ugly 
And they don't want to look at close-ups of genitals. Do you think that might be changing just through the big spread of pornography? And, and On the internet? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. And it'd be interesting to do a survey and find out how many adult males have studied thoughtfully looking at and studied their genitals and how many females have thoughtfully looked at and studied their genitals yeah. and how many would think that would be embarrassing and awkward and whether that and then do it then check maybe every like 20 years before that and then teenagers now and see whether there's a big shift in terms of being comfortable with the body uh, that would be very valid I, I, I hope somebody's seeing that it's easy to to uh ask people and stuff on the internet, people are more revealing on, on emails and stuff. And Last one. Number three. Come on, come in number three. Yeah. Yourself. 
That's me as well. Yeah. Well, who was that one then? The first one. Lady J. Oh, I was confused all the way through then. My apologies. That's me. Yeah. Well, that explains why I look so weird. <laughs> oh, you've, you got, you've got no I've mouth. Got, I've got no mouth. I'm finally going to shut up. <laughs> why? Does it look like you? I think it, I think it does. Does it feel like you? If it's more important than does it look like you? Gosh, I don't know. If I didn't realize it was me, I don't know. Be... But you, were, you were thinking likeness, and then you were looking at the details. Look at the profile. I was just assuming if the other one, because I thought the first one that you'd said it was me, I just assumed that this had to be Lady J. I didn't really think it looked like specifically either of us in terms of realism. It's obviously not realistic. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm nourishing, nurturing and nourishing the world with my words. That's what it means. You are. You, know, you influence a lot of artists. All kinds of artists. So that, you that's, corrupt kids. So, oh, so, and the, the, mammary, the mammary gland of alternative art. <laughs> <laughs> Even with an extra spare in case they try and chop off one of them and shut me up. <laughs> And I highlighted the nipple and the mouth part with the uh, pearlescent bead. Yeah, nice. Okay. So, uh, how did you get the, that pick? Can we get this on the camera? Oh, I can see it. See, now you're getting other people to uh, help you corrupt kids with their art. Yay! <laughs> You, you made me paint this. And I'm very, very glad. <laughs> Good for me. <laughs> Yay! 